Welcome to MSP Unplugged. I'm your host, Paco LeBron. This is the place to learn how to run your IT service business, whether that is a one-person shop or a nimble MSP or boutique MSP, as we've been liking to say nowadays, or leading a team for the journey. This is the place for you. Let me go ahead and introduce my partner in crime, Rick Smith. Rick, how are you today? I'm doing great, Paco. Good to see you. Good to see you. You know, it's a good day today. It is our uh, faux Tuesday for our Tech Talk Tuesday, as we like to call it, and recording on this great day. Um, but before we go ahead and bring in our guest here, just wanted to catch up and see how's everything going on in your world. Well, it's been, uh, we've had uh, the end of TechCon, <laughs> which was a lot of work for us. <clears throat> so now it's getting back in the trenches, getting ready to start that fourth quarter living, which we <laughs> talk about all the time. And if you're not all aware of that series, we do start that fourth quarter living here in the fourth quarter of every year. So next week, it's beginning in October. So if you're not thinking about your sales goals, your uh, growth goals, this is something you want to take a look at. And you might be looking at a new opportunity for stacks and other tools. So I'm hoping you will go ahead and give it lend an ear to this guest here. We have Ducks over, who is the chief brand officer over at Avpoint. Ducks, how are you today? Fantastic. Great to meet you, Paco. Great to be here. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Well, Ducks, you know, we had a good uh, a bit of conversation right before the show. And so what I would love to do is for those that are tuning in to this episode, know a little bit about you first and kind of how you kind of came to the space and how sure. you found your way over to AppPoint. Sure. Uh, as uh, Paco mentioned, my name is Ducks Raymond Sai. I got my ducks in a row. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> and been, been in this industry over uh, 22 years. So my background is I'm a developer. And uh, prior to AppPoint, I had my own little MSP as well out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. But I've been with AppPoint in the last 10 years, and it's just been an exciting journey, especially these days where everybody's jumping on the cloud. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, as far as you've mentioned the cloud, and so, you know, it, it's amazing on how the definition of the cloud has expanded over these few years, let alone when the introduction of, hey, we're going to have put things onto the cloud. So there's such a confusing of private cloud, public cloud, sure. being able to understand, you know, what the cloud is, our clients communicating the definition of cloud. Um, I imagine Avpoint has a very big stake in this right and really understanding on, on the cloud can you tell us a little bit about how you find your way over to avpoint and what avpoint is all about absolutely so i essentially got into the msp business back in the early 2000s where really when everything's still on prem and what we help our organizations within customers with first we had services around building intranets and portals and you know i don't know if you remember i had to fire up notepad to crank out html code for those <laughs> little <laughs> intranets but these days you know it's, it's much easier and then through that transition especially when the cloud came out when google started introducing simple things like gmail and then microsoft came out with office 365 we saw a lot of organizations large and small embracing this idea of wait you know, infrastructure is not a core business. Let's focus on our core business and let's rely on these technologies that's cheaper, much better and feature rich. And this is essentially where we are today. The last four years, a lot of organizations just jumped on the cloud uh, due to COVID and due to remote work. But I think a lot of organizations are maximizing the benefits of it today. And that's where AppPoint comes in. AppPoint is a publicly traded software company. We've been around for 22 years and we enable organizations worldwide to collaborate with confidence. That's our mission. And if you think about collaboration, the cloud today is a centerpiece of collaboration. And what we offer to both customers and uh, partners like MSPs is a platform that can help optimize SaaS operations and more importantly, secure collaboration. I know security is a big deal. We talk about, a lot about security. We, I'm sure you talk to your customers about security, but one area that there's a glaring need and help around is in the area of collaboration security. And I think this is a great opportunity for MSPs. And this is something I would love to share and how we can help MSPs grow their business in that area. Uh, we, we serve over 17,000 customers around the world. We're in 17 countries and our technology can support collaboration cloud platforms like Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, and common collaboration environments that uh, your customers 
typically use. Gotcha. Now, can you elaborate a little bit more on, you know, I think for a lot of MSPs, they, you know, I feel that they are trying to dive into either cybersecurity or feel that they may have a good idea of how to, quote unquote, secure some of those efforts. Sure. But obviously your tool in being a third party and having those eyes in probably speaks volumes of being able to provide that secure collaboration. Can you elaborate a little bit more of how AvPoint does that for instances of Microsoft, Google, et cetera? hundred percent. So I'm sure the common situation uh, today, especially when you work with customers, be it 10 people organization to a thousand people organization is, look, we, we don't want to buy on-premises technologies anymore. We want to sign up with the cloud. So let's take mm -hmm. Microsoft, for example. So, uh, you know, Paco, we talked earlier about you supporting customers with 365. And Rick, do you have customers using Microsoft 365 yeah. as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so step one, what's going to happen is you need to help them migrate, right? You need to help them get to this new cloud environment. And that's one of the uh, first technologies that we have. What we offer to MSPs is a complete set of tools to help your customer with their cloud journey. From the initial migration, our tool is the best in class for Microsoft, Google. So you can move stuff from on-premises to Microsoft 365, from Google Workspace to Microsoft 365 or vice versa. And what we found from an MSP perspective for that first project, our tool can help you save time and then, which means that you can have better margins around it. Because typically what we find with MSPs, they e either do it manually or they do it with uh, free tools that they find, which ends up spending a lot of time as well. So that's number one. Our tool can save you time, even though you charge the same thing to your customers, better margins. But number two, our tool can also help customers because our tool provides an assessment capability. You know how when, when we move houses, right? We, we suddenly end up figuring out, oh, I have a lot of stuff that I don't need. And that's yeah. true with moving to the cloud. Our tool can scan the environment and tell the customers, hey, you have stuff that's more than 10 years old. You may not need this anymore. And this helps provide that guidance, not only to the MSP, but also to the customer so that when they move, they don't have to take up as much space. So in case you don't know, if you reach a certain threshold of storage in cloud platforms, they charge you more and right. you don't want that for your customers. So that's step one, right? So the migration tool helps you get into that initial journey to the cloud. But as we know with migration projects, it's a one-time project. It's a one-time revenue. What we wanna help MSPs with is their monthly recurring revenues or MRR. So as an offering, for example, the next thing you can offer as an MSP is a data protection offering to your customers. And you can do this like any subscription model. So for example, if you manage their 365 environment and you charge X dollars per user per month, you can tack on a couple more dollars where you provide a data protection offering. Now, what does this mean? This means that you can protect their data from ransomware, for example. I hate to say it, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So when ransomware attack comes, you're equipped, your customers are safe, even if they're locked out of their cloud environment through a data protection technology called cloud backup, customers are able to get to the data that they need, be it email or chats or documents, right? And unfortunately, you know, all kinds of organizations are being hit by ransomware. So that's just one example of data protection. Another example of data protection, in case a lot of your customers don't know, is a lot of these vendors, be it Microsoft, Amazon, or Google, they're not responsible for backing up your data. When you delete something, you know, after a period of time, like 30 or 60 days, it's gone be it email, a Word document, what have you. We're not like back on the days of on-prem where, hey, you know, I've been audited by, I don't know, some government agency. I need my data from five years ago back. Let me just call IT and pull the tape back up. Uh, for kids listening, I'm sure you don't know what <laughs> tape backup is, but we used to do that. But today you can't do that in the cloud unless you have some data protection technology such as what we offer. And we have the best in class uh, data protection technology called Cloud Backup as uh, recognized by Gartner, Forrester, and it's very, very MSP friendly. We help you build a business around that. And then the last part around this collaboration security cloud journey is, you know, you help customers move to the cloud, that's great. Now they're in the cloud, you help them protect it. But the third piece is you want to help enforce collaboration security. And what, what do we mean by this? So for example, I'm sure all of us here, 
because we work in Google Docs or Microsoft 365, it's so easy to share like a Word document or a PowerPoint file, right? We just hit share, you know, I'm working on a script for the show and Paco will share it with Rick, no problem. But how do you know Paco if Rick shared it with somebody else, right? It's not easy. And I'm sure a lot of people aren't malicious, but sometimes be it sharing files as an email attachment or you're in office, you're sharing these documents. Unfortunately, sometimes it falls on the wrong hands. So we have a third technology called policies and insights where MSPs can use for their customers that they can enforce on the background some of these policies. So you can say things like if there's a credit card number in a piece of content, be it an Excel file or Word document, we cannot share it outside the company. So the end user doesn't even have to know if they try and share something with a credit card number, it just won't let them, right? Because that's the policy. So where MSPs can come in now is you can help build and in, in, uh, roll in some of these business rules to protect critical data. And our technology is designed for MSPs. And again, you can offer a services offering around this as well. We work with over 4,000 MSPs worldwide, providing these services to their customers using our technologies. Awesome. So there's a lot to unpack there. And I know you were speaking a very great language that Rick has known for take backups <laughs> and on-prem and right off the valley there. Uh, old school. There you go. Back in um, our days. Yeah. Back in our days. Right? The good old days. So, you know, I, I, you mentioned obviously three really great tools and, and you know, I want to be able to rewind back and really focus on some of these. And the first one is being migration. And I think that's a huge point to prove is because there are sometimes being able to utilize some of these tools that are out there or free tools, but then you end up getting caught in mm -hmm. some of these big things. So, so, for example, I can remember when you just mentioned about the insights and really understanding, hey, we have X amount of years of data here. Do you really need it? Or, hey, we have X amount of email addresses. Do you really need them? And so I can remember a migration three years ago where you know, silly me at the time when I did the migration, I didn't check to think, oh, well, you know, this, they shouldn't have more than whatever the size of the mailbox should be. And sure. the migration for basically everybody completed, but for the CEO, fi come to find out they had 80 gigs worth of email in their inbox. And so, Crazy. A, it stopped and we had to figure out what we we're going to do from there. Obviously, and it had to be the top person of that company. So it made us look even worse. So having some type of insights to say, hey, this is a pretty big inbox. A, do you have the proper licensing for it, right? To even consider that. But B, do you really need all this data? And come to find out that, of course, she didn't need all this data. So we had to go in, figure out for her because she had been, you know, uh, there for well over a decade. Um, and so obviously they had all uh, accrued on there. So I think that's such a huge piece to that, um, on the migration piece. And then the other piece of it is sometimes you don't grab everything. And exactly. So sometimes, and sometimes you, like you just mentioned that, you know, there are multiple things you got to think about when my, doing a migration, whether it's just the files, whether it's just emails, what about contacts? What if it's about other things, you know, that you probably, I'm assuming your tool will be able to help identify probably missing items that you didn't consider. hundred percent. Well, um, I know that that's going to be a huge point for some that, you know, that may have an issue where I don't know where to start and they're trying to come in to figure out a migration. Um, how have partners kind of leveraged some of those tools that you are aware of on some of these things? And have you, do you have any gotcha stories that maybe you have heard from some of your partners to say, you know what, this was probably one of the best things that we've had so far. I mean, I want to tack on to the last point you made, right? Like yeah. back, you know, maybe 10 years ago, migration, people think just email and it's still mm -hmm. true, but yeah. now it's getting complicated between emails and now, you know, it's, it's folders in local computers or file shares and then now even chats, right? So let's say people are using Google and now they're using chat. We need to move that because it's still business mm -hmm. critical data. Right. So what I've heard from partners before our tool, what they would do is they would do this individually, which as you may imagine, not only takes a lot of time and effort, but really combing through what we need to move, what we not, we don't need to move. That's one. So for example, I was speaking with a partner last week, we just signed up. He said, you know, we just moved a customer 50 users from on-premises to 365 and we charge $150 per user, 
right? So the total project's not that big, it's 7,500, somewhere around that. And he said, we move email, some files uh, uh, in, on file shares, only those two things. And they spent 60 hours, right? So just doing the math, the profit was about 1,500 bucks. Yeah, it's all right. And then I said, did you know with our tool, we, we ran through the same scenario with the exact same thing, that same 50 users that you charge 150 bucks per user, all that could be done in five hours with our tool. Hmm. Right? Five hours. And, and, and what's the total cost of licensing? I mean, obviously, you, you know, we sell our tool. Our licensing right. cost for 50 users is 650 bucks. So your profit from manually doing it 1500 with our tool is now about 6800. Yep. It's a no brainer, right? And, yeah. and it's not even because, sure, making more money is great, but it's getting more complicated. Because oftentimes what happened, I'm sure you've experienced it, Paco, with migration, it, it, especially when you do it manually, you don't get it right the first time. Because right. it's not just the content, now it's the metadata, right? Yeah. So there's metadata around files, there's permissions, there's version, so, so it's, it's really complex. No, I mean, I think I want to hit on a point where you just really dive into saving time, not only just with utilizing an automated tool like yours, but specifically the gotchas, like you just mentioned, hey, you may have missed something during the process and now you gotta go back or redo the whole process sometimes, which is wasted time as well. Rick, I wanna toss it over to you because obviously migrations has been quite a bit lately for a lot of us. And so, you know, what is your input on a lot of this? And two, you know, saving time sounds not too bad now right. I, I was thinking about the saving on. time portion of this mm -hmm. particularly and i've had this happen to me twice over the years you miss a few things and you can't just go back and get those things you miss no. you're starting the process over again making sure now that you capture that step that you missed to get that data if you can and sometimes you can't even get it the way you want to get it so that that is definitely a a, a huge issue and I think that's one of the things that as MSPs, we don't put enough emphasis on is our time. Those work hour time, that work hour time is very important. And again, a 60 hour project, however, you know, many hours, which could only take five, those 55 hours could have been spent on so many other things, making money or, you know, doing things to, to, you know, progress your business. Now, I, I guess my, my question to this too is, you know, we talk about the, the migration of, of, of uh, you know, things like email and data. Now, are, do you guys move, let's say you, you're hosting a uh, server somewhere else. Do you migrate that as well? Do you do things like that, migrate that into your platform? Great, great question. So I'm going to answer that right away. And I want to tack on something you mentioned is our, our core strength is migrating data. So we don't migrate applications just yet. We don't migrate an entire VM okay. just yet, but, uh, you know, stay tuned. But for yeah. now, our core strength is moving data. And to be specific, it's unstructured data your emails, your files, your chats, right? Where these tends to be more messier. So we've been doing this for, boy, this is how we started a company 22 years ago. And we do this for the largest organizations in the world, like US government agencies, like Defense Department or, or uh, State Department, right? So our technology has been proven and being used by major organizations worldwide. So now this is at the hands of the MSPs that they can use. But one thing you mentioned, Rick, about time, I wanna go back, cause I, I, I mentioned cost, right? So that $650, by the way, it's not just licensing. That's the five hour labor cost. So let's say a hundred bucks an hour, that's 500 bucks. The actual license for our migration tool is 150 bucks for 50 users. So now the total internal cost 650 bucks. That's why the total profit is higher. Mm -hmm. and, and while this is certainly great, what I'm excited about is beyond migration because there's so much business that can be made, especially now AI is coming with more data being produced. It needs to be protected. So I, I don't know if you both of you know this. So, so I'm going to share some stats, right? So pop quiz, how many paying users do you think? I'm just going to pick Microsoft. How many paying Microsoft 365 users do you think are there in a month? Ballpark. Oh, that's easy. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot. <laughs> okay. What, what, ballpark numbers. 
Eesh. A lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's it's. T- take a wild guess. No, no judgment. Million, so. Okay. Yeah, you're you're there. You're there. Million users. Three, today, at least what they publish, it's over 350 million paying Microsoft 365 users in a month, right? So think about, and, and those licenses varies. It could be as simple as the, you know, the, the main, the basic license, I think 10 bucks a user a month to the most advanced E5, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks a user a month. So it, 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 it's a lot of users. And do you think Microsoft is going to stop there? Oh, 350 million, we're happy. <laughs> so so they have a goal i believe in the next five years to get to hit a billion which is doable right yeah. but here's another fascinating stat as we know platforms like microsoft or google they only offer 80 percent of the way right so it's like xbox you buy xbox it's a great gaming platform but the best game on xbox is not made by microsoft right so the right. same with 365 or google workspace They provide a collaboration platform. It can get you there, but if you need extended data protection, you need extended security, you need to work with partners like MSPs. And the most recent stat with Microsoft, they share all these stats, which is really cool. For every $1 that a paying customer spends on Microsoft in in the cloud, they spend about $9 on extra services. And that's up for the taking. Now, is that within the Microsoft ecosystem or through a third party on being able to provide that extended reach that you just mentioned? Through a third party. Gotcha. So they've done analysis across their customers, large and small, to say, hey, you're paying us, you know, uh, whatever. For every dollar you pay us, how much you spend on extended third party services and products? The average is about $9. And right now, with the massive adoption of the cloud and with AI coming in, which will generate more data, there's a lot of need out there. And that's why I'm excited uh, for this opportunity, especially for a lot of MSPs, because I know a lot of MSPs are looking at ways to expand their business. And I got to tell you, this area of collaboration security is underserved. Now let's dive into that a little bit, because I know that Ducks, we've talked about obviously the three core products that you met that you highlighted uh, today, which is obviously the migration platform, the cloud backup, and obviously the governance and policy uh, ability as well. Um, but you obviously mentioned uh, changing gears a little bit about how to help MSPs. We've talked about saving time. We've talked about mm-hmm. how to save the money and improve their services. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how being able to partner with AppPoint would go around? How easy is it to partner with you? How long does it take someone to be onboarded with your uh, product or any of the products so they can hit the ground running uh, utilizing that for their own end users? Well, great, great question, Paco. First and foremost, it's very easy to sign up as a partner. Uh, all you have to do is go to apppoint.com slash partners and you can sign up right there and there. Uh, once you've signed up, we quickly enable you with a lot of the capabilities that I described. So for example, like migration, you will be equipped with all the assets you need. Let's say you want to market to your customers, presentation materials. If you want to run a webinar, we have a full on video you just memorize and you do it yourself. Uh, brochures, right? And even technical guide and training, we have all that available in our partner platform. So you can get going right away. So that's number one. And then uh, certainly a partner development manager would work with you to equip you and help your business around that. And even as far as helping you build statement of work, we have sample SOWs that you can start putting together and uh, tailoring to your business, to your customer. The other part is, Beyond that, signing up, beyond offering these services, we have a world-class MSP platform called Elements. And what this does is it helps MSP partners to manage all their customers in a single pane of glass. So one of the challenges with uh, providing an MSP service is operationalizing your business. We talk about saving money and being more efficient. What if you have 100 customers that you manage your 365 environment on? The challenge we have today is you have to log in. I'm sure you've experienced this. Each of the tenant, manage it, tweak it, whatever. We have an elements platform that you log in. All your customers are there and you can manage it from a single pane of glass. And let's say you onboarded a new customer. You can even uh, automatically say, okay, I want to run backup, enable governance, all these rules and policy, one click. So you can really templatize some of these 
offering. So let's say you come up with a data protection offering, all the rules and policy, you can templatize it and just deploy it across customers. And that saves you a lot of time as an MSP. And this is free, by the way, because uh, there are technologies like this that you have to pay for and buy. But as an AppPoint partner, this comes with a partnership. So really three things, right? Easy to sign up. We enable you with all your go-to-market uh, uh, assets that you need. And third, we have a MSP platform that helps operationalize on how you uh, uh, offer these services and automate a lot of these things on the back end. Perfect. Now, as far as the element platform, obviously you've talked about multi-tenant, which is a must have to when you're working with MSPs and, and definitely for a lot of the clients. And you, man you, you, you stated managing, being able to deploy, obviously, those three core products we talked about and more. Now, does it also help manage with other services inside of Microsoft, like best in class, security operations, and make some of those tweaks and then templatize them, like you mentioned, across the board? Or is it just only the products to templatize on some of the governance policies that sure. are applied through there? Great question. So primarily it, uh, it helps deploy our products, but some of the core things around Microsoft. So for example, like, I don't know, like, like setting up users. So some of the basic things you can sure. as well, but we're integrating more of the, uh, Microsoft platform. And by the way, it's not just Microsoft, Google as well. And, uh, Salesforce as well. Cause we know some customers use Salesforce and Google. So imagine now you go to a, a platform like this, not only can you manage 365, but Salesforce and Google, in a single pane of glass. Very cool. Uh, Rick, anything you wanted to add on to any of that that we've talked about so far? Well, no, I, I'm just, you know, I, I am, we're heavy, heavy into the Microsoft uh, ecosystem, I guess you'd say. So um, I'm just, just learn, learning it all, trying to get it all in. So um, to answer your question, Paco, I'm not going to add anything into it right here. I'm just trying to take it all in. I'm sorry, a little. No, and I think that's a great question that from that, actually. So that's, you know, let's say there's someone, you know, like Rick kind of mentioned or someone that is brand new. They are mm -hmm. a great fix shop. They're trying to sure. figure out, OK, I need to get my, you know, I need to get this MRR. I have to figure out a recurring yep. revenue uh, 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 schema, you know, how it, by them, let's say, hey, look, I listened to this episode. I think I want to tackle on. Uh, being able to not only do cloud backup, I want to take on helping migrations on on-prem and having the ability to manage it. And that's kind of where my starting point is, because, you know, as everyone knows, and we've talked about security, you know, email and business email compromise is probably one of the worst uh, 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 flagrant things that are happening to cause a lot of the pain that a lot of people yep. are going through. So this is the, this is the flag I want to post. This is where I want to start off with. Yep. And someone reaches out to you, uh, you, they sign up and they talk to your partner development center, uh, uh, development member. Um, will they be able to say, Hey, you know what? We totally understand that you're brand new. Here's best case, uh, yep. uh scenario. Here's best, uh, practices on how someone would approach that. Will they help someone kind of with the white glove treatment to get them going, not only with the product, but also to help them understand why, you know, you do the certain things you do with the product. 100%. So very good point, right? So one of the key things that we do when a partner signs up is, uh, first of all, again, we have tons of resources, uh, self-service partner can look, look uh, MSP partners can look at it and say, okay, this is where I want to put my flag on. I want to start building a migration business. Mm -hmm. That's great. But if, if you're trying to look at all the stuff and, and trying to figure out where is the best bang for my buck, right? Mm -hmm. Our PDMs can work with you and say, where are you in the business today? Well, where are you in the world? What's your customers? What are you doing? And then we can recommend and say, you know what? So if you're, if you, if you mentioned that most of my partners are already in 365, we're just keeping the lights on for them. You know, maybe we're, we're making some, uh, uh, uh profit around the licensing, the 365 licensing, how can we add more to it? Then, for example, our PDM would say, hey, you should introduce a data protection service, just tack on a couple dollars on that Microsoft license and it could grow further. Or if your customer is highly regulated industry, like you mentioned, if they're, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the healthcare industry or legal industry, then security and making sure only the right people have access to the right things around our governance and collaboration security technology uh, can help you. So our partners or our partner development manager will help. And frankly, those three products are your way in. Because yeah. if you look at our website, we have over 35 cloud products out there. 
And uh, what I'm just sharing with you is just get the foot in the door. And as your customers mature in the cloud adoption, we have other technologies that you can provide. So for example, we have a partner here in uh, Washington, DC. They offer cloud, uh, they offer records management capability. And with the government, records management's a big deal. We have a technology called cloud records that's FedRAMP compliant. So if you're in public sector, FedRAMP is a big deal. Our technology is approved by the federal government and they can't just buy from anybody. So a lot of our part MSP partners here in the DC area, they use us because not only our technology is best in class, but it's approved by the federal government to be in the government cloud, right? So there's a lot of options. So I, I don't want to overwhelm everybody with 35 different things, but really right. foot in the door, migration, backup for data protection and policies and insights for uh, governance. Awesome. Well, Ducks, you know, we're right at the end of our show. I mean, I think we can continue this conversation for well over these 30 minutes that you were gracious enough to spend with us. Is there any uh, lasting words, call to actions that you want to make sure our listeners know before we kind of round out this show? Well, like I said, the opportunity is massive and the adoption of the cloud just continued to grow, especially with AI coming. And one of the things that we want to equip our MSPs with is not only be ready for this cloud usage, but also provide uh, leadership around AI as well. So looking forward to work with everybody, appoint.com slash partners to sign up. If you have questions, hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is on the screen. And if you just look me up on LinkedIn, Ducks Raymond Tsai, happy to connect with you. And, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to spend time with you, Rick and Paco. No, I appreciate you uh, spending the time here. We'll make sure we have your uh, information in the show notes as well, along with that link that you've mentioned as well. Rick, another episode in the can. Yes, uh, any other uh, lasting words before we uh, round out this show as well? No, Ducks, I, I do want to give give thanks for you taking the time again, as Paco said, uh, just to, to explain to us what you guys do and how it can help us. So uh, hopefully there's some MSPs out here who can use your services and, you know, We'll hope to have been that uh, that avenue to bring them to you. Hey, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, that's a good. That's a good one. <laughs> so yeah, again, ducks. As Rick said, we appreciate you taking the time out to talk about App Point, and we appreciate all of you for tuning in. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. Watch the video podcast over at youtubecom unplug Subscribe, like, and hit that notification button so you're notified whenever a new episode is available. You can also take us with you, take us with you on the go. We're on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and of course on Spotify as well on all of your favorite podcatcher apps. Most importantly, if you love to hear, if you love what you hear, please leave us a review on one of those platforms as it'll help us spread the awareness to other like-minded business owners like yourselves. Again, thank you for listening, and we will see you next time on MSP Unplugged.